Okay, so, yeah, the subject could come up, and I'm sure it will. Uh, for a devotee, he's done the Sankirtan Marathon, he's done really, really well, fantastic marathon, and now he's going to relax and slacken off a little bit, which is okay to some degree, but the more you slacken off and the more you, you like that feeling, that kind of uh, exuberance that you experience after performing the yoga, you have to be careful you don't become attached to that. Because when it comes to starting up again, um, it'll be difficult. It's better to try and keep the wheels rolling, even if you go quite intense during the marathon, after the marathon, slowly keep keep going out. Maybe don't do such a big day or such an intense endeavour, but but try and keep the, the wheels rolling, you know. I didn't do that this year. <laughs> I kind of put my feet up on Christmas Day and, and it turns into New Year and then you... <laughs> You're kind of losing your. You don't know what's yeah. going on, you know. Yeah, something me also. I I I slept enough for a few days, uh, but it's uh, it just be it's just more difficult when you have to crank things back up and get back into it, you know. Yeah, you can feel it. You can feel how much you need it as well. In one sense, there's one kind of a benefit of being stupid. It's like the pain of um, being off track. Well, like the, the awkwardness of being off track makes you really want to get back on track. It can do, yeah. Uh, we, we, we find uh, <laughs> historically, uh, unfortunately, that's not the case over uh, a sustained period of time. You know, you can you can you can kind of go to and fro a bit, but eventually uh, the, the material desires will start to come up again, mm. and uh, you'll start feeling like. I mean, it's it's kind of almost karma candy that like you've you've done the yoga now mm. and uh, I remember one day what he told me he was on the Radha party and he said I've collected a million dollars for Srila Prabhupada so I've done my bit now now I'm just going to enjoy myself for the rest I mean he'd done it for like 20 years or how long it took him to collect a million dollars and then he decided that he wanted to slack it off so he was he was actively avoiding doing any type of something and he felt like he'd done his bit yeah because I guess the, the result of performing a sacrifice is you do have the opportunity then to cash out on that. Yeah. It's, and it's something, a point to actually cash makes in. a lot is don't cash in too early. Yeah. Because, you know, you might have come from a position where you had nothing, you're just materially destitute. Now you have some skills which you've attained from doing Sankatan and yeah. maybe you could get a job. And, you know, like, you can you actually gain strength from the austerities that you've performed. Yeah. Your so, karma candor is you... You want to fulfill some fruitive desire. Jnana is you. If you bhakti is jnana, mishra bhakti, then you're looking for some kind of liberated state now, where you can be free of any reaction, any suffering, and that can just lead to carefree, peaceful life. You know, that's not pure bhakti. Mm. And then pure bhakti is where um, you start getting a taste for the anxiety and the, the desperation and depending on the Lord, and you you start. Like Queen Conti, she's looking for those calamities. So, the uh, long term sanctan devotee, he starts to get a taste for being in a situation where he's completely dependent upon the Lord and begging for his mercy all the time. And he, he feels at home mm. being like that. It's interesting because we all have, materially speaking, with our conditioning, we have like our a home, like our own home situation. Like, I feel comfortable, I've always taken shelter. So, for me, I used to play like a lot of like just mindless games like kind of like where you just like chop a tree and you level up your tree chopping skill you know like this kind of game so over Christmas I met one of the boys who I used to play it's called RuneScape I met one of the boys I used to play with it in Cambridge when I was there like randomly and he like gave me an account and got me on there so on Christmas I, I logged on and it's like you you you've, you can take shelter there but and there is a sort of shelter that you receive but I, I know the whole time, like, this isn't the real, this is Durashraya or whatever, this is bad shelter. Yeah. So it's like, but still, you some something in you, there's not enough strength to neglect it, if you know what I mean? Like, you're enjoying that bad shelter too much to, you know what I mean? Like, you're not desperate enough. You just f sort of become very floppy. So it takes, a, I would say it takes a while for a devotee to get to the stage of being seasoned, that uh, he's, he finds these things distasteful mm -hmm. and uh, he wants to avoid them. And rather than fighting with our material desires, it's better to just avoid mm -hmm. those temptations in the first place. You know, They say that's the, the real art of 
a, a truly austere person is one who avoids the enticements in the first place, not somebody that keeps falling for things and then struggling to give them up. Yeah, it's stupid. It is a stupid, it's the definition of insanity, isn't it, for my understanding, is to do the same thing again and again. Yeah, and expect a different result. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So, you, so you have to look at the territory ahead of you and think, how am I going to navigate my way through this? I want to get from Kanishta, where I'm going up and down all the time, and I want to reach the Majima Adhikari platform. I was just recently in uh, Budapest, and Bhaktipad Sanyasi there was saying um, that Shiva Ramayana had said, you should get through the Anat in the British stage in just two or three years. Mm. That's what he says, that ideally what should happen. But for most of us, it takes 15, 20 years to, to get through all that. Because the, pro the problem with Anat and Navriti is it's not unwanted. We're trying to establish ourselves in Sambanda so that we can realize, well, I think I want this, but I've got sufficient knowledge to know that I don't really want this because if I was to fall for it afterwards, I'd be very dissatisfied. Anatta is becoming established firmly grounded in the philosophy so that we don't want to even entertain it and then have to realise, oh, actually, I didn't want that. I thought I really thought I wanted it this time. So how long is it going to take before we wise up? And then when, when we start... we want Krishna consciousness? Yeah. Okay, yeah. And that we don't want these things that, that we think we want and we, mm -hmm. fall for, we fall for so easily. And tenth offence to the holy name is not having complete faith, which is then juxtaposed with maintaining material attachment. It's the same thing, basically. Mm -hmm. If, if you've got material attachment and you can't see that these are unwanted things, then that means you have a lack of faith mm -hmm. in the holy name and therefore you're chanting Namapara, you're chanting the name of It's only when you've decided, I don't want this anymore, then you, then you can come to the stage of Namabas. And until you get to the stage of Namabas, you, you're just kind of wallowing around in, in the quagmire. <laughs> is, is there a way to... Uh kind of use those material desires in Krishna's service and then get, get rid of them that way or is it better just to completely neglect them? Um, I'll give you an example, like this game, my friend that I met, he plays this game professionally so people will watch him play the game. So like the other night around Christmas time, I went on the game and I, my name on the game was Krishna Monk. So the whole time while he was streaming, he was like, oh, it's Krishna Monk, my friend is Krishna. And like, so he was talking to about 200 people about Krishna, you know what I mean? And, I, and he said that he'd let me stream the game and talk about Krishna. But I was thinking, this is, what? this looks dangerous, but at the same time, he's got hundreds of people listening. <laughs> so, so how does that affect you? How, how do you come away from that? How does that affect your chanting? And uh, if the thing is actually desirable and it's useful, then it will be favorable. And if it's not, then you'll lose your enthusiasm and you'll lose your taste, you'll lose your focus, actually, that's what will happen. Unwanted things fuzz our consciousness up mm -hmm. and we lose that clarity to really know. Krishna's saying, if you become conscious of me, otherwise you'll be lost. And he says, if you become. So it's a big if, will, will you do it? We're trying to be Krishna conscious. Krishna's saying, if you do, great. If you don't, the shosha seed and anxiety, you'll be lost, says that in the 18th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Mm -hmm. So it's a big if and we don't really want to play around, you know, it's like, yeah. I'm going to take this gun down, spin the barrel, and if it lands on the chamber with no bullet, and when you pull the trigger, you'll be fine. But if you spin it and you pull it and it, and it isn't, then it'll blow your head off. Are you okay with that? You'll be like, I don't, I'm not, I don't really want to gamble. So Krishna's like, okay, if you want to gamble, then you can either have me and no problems, or you'll be lost. Yeah. So you, you should be thinking, well, I don't really want to gamble, I just want to make sure there's a bullet in every chamber. Yeah, a holy name in every chamber. <laughs> I think as well, like when when you're engaging in that type of activity, you can sense that the super soul is like screaming. Like there's something inside you that's like, stop doing this. Yeah, yeah the super soul uh, is facilitating your desire. So you you may be kidding yourself on, and the super soul may know that deep down inside, you don't really want to do this, mm -hmm. and you're looking for any excuse to discontinue and become distracted. Mm -hmm. So the super soul is going to facilitate that. It's very, very subtle. Mm. The super soul will even remind you of your material desires because it doesn't want to in any way encroach upon your freedom of choice. Mm. He wants to fully facilitate you and only when you are fully ready to come to him with no agenda and then immediately he'll embrace you and he'll pull you out of the material energy. But 
but the problem is, uh, is, is getting to that clear, aligning ourselves with the philosophy and getting into that clear consciousness where we realize, wow, I the soul really want this. Mm -hmm. And this is the thousand voices that's going on when I'm chanting, telling me I want this and that, the next thing, that's not me. I've got to try and find the soul. It's in amongst all those clutter of voices saying, please, Ainanda, Tanushkankaram, pick me up, place me in as, as an, an atom at your lotus feet, please get me out of the material energy. Somewhere inside mm -hmm. you're crying like that, you're saying that. Is it common then for persons, like when you join Krishna consciousness, you, you seem to be closer to that experience? Like this is all I really want. And then over the years, yeah, yeah. It, it, it fades away. It slackens, yeah, and we relax. We relax because the initial reason why most of us come to Krishna consciousness is because we're in distress. And take the distress away, mm -hmm. and then the incentive for taking up Krishna consciousness also goes away. That's why Krishna says, of the four pious people that come to him, the one that comes to him with full knowledge is the most dear. So what he's kind of saying is, look, get to the point of being in full knowledge and approach me like that person, and then, then you'll be okay. Otherwise, if you're just coming to me in distress, I'll take away your distress, and you'll go straight back to where you were, you know? Mm -hmm. So that I guess we have to sort of have that in, as the goal and work to that goal and create a structure because because yeah. you know when you go off doing stupid things like that's just one example like yeah. I stopped I've stopped it now but like you know like it, yeah. it happened for a few days yeah and then like okay we so, have to be clear it has to be very very our consciousness has to be very clear and if it's not if we're doing something and we're not quite sure mm -hmm. then that's usually not a good sign in itself you know because yeah. that's how mind likes to come in a kind of vague yeah. fuzzy. Uh, Thing. Yeah, I remember one time I was in, in the shop, in, uh, it was called Krishna's at the time, we used to have a shop down there and I was looking at, they had different things on the shop and I said, oh, is this water offered? And um, the lady in the shop goes, well, kind of. <laughs> so if it's kind of offered, then it's kind of okay for Krishna consciousness and everything's kind of okay, then mm. it's not really. It's not really okay because it's too vague, you know. Is there a way we can become clear again? Uh, yeah, we, we can, but we have to we have to study the book seriously. Mm. And um, Sri Ramosh was saying in the book Sri Bhakti Chintamani that the first blossoming of the hearing process is the ability to practice what you hear. Mm. So you're not actually really hearing, it's just going in one ear and out the other mm. until you're able to retain some instruction and implement it and think, wow, yeah, that's right, I should be cutting down my eating, mm. you know. So you've heard it, you've registered, and now you're going to apply it. That's the, that's the hearing process starting to bloom, mm. so then amazing transformations can take place. But in other words, if you're just reading because it stimulates you intellectually, and it makes you feel like you're a good devotee when you go away, because, you know, five extra slopers now, and you can make you sound clever when you give in class. Mm. That's okay, but you're not really applying it, you know. You, you believe so many things, but you know, implementing the things that you believe. You know? So I was listening to Guru Gurin the Maharaj lecture last week. Like I watched it on YouTube. Like if you watch his lectures, it's a whole experience. Very animated. Yeah. But he was like, um, you're reading like a parrot. There's a guy there called Mr. Peter. Because you're reading like a parrot, Mr. Peter. You can recite it, but you don't know what it means. You haven't experienced it. You haven't practiced it. Mr. Peter, you're a parrot. You're a rascal parrot. Like he was just like hammering this Mr. Peter guy. Because it's that, it's that, okay, I'm just like reading the words, yeah. but I'm not applying it. Yeah. You know, it's kind of, for, for me, it's, it seems quite like, uh, almost like Maya punches you down a little bit. Yeah, she it covers. It know. feels hard to like, get back on your feet and re, like, <laughs> like re, kind of. Well, we, we fall for it because we think Maya's our friend. Mm. So when she says, let's, let's do this, it'll be good for you, you know, give you a bit of juice. Yeah. Things are getting a bit dry. This will spice things up a bit for you. Mm. And we believe that. Mm. We, 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 we embrace it full-heartedly. Oh, yes, Maya, you are my friend, after all. Mm -hmm. And then she has two potencies. One is she covers you, so you become forgetful. And later on, you're thinking, why did I fall for that? I, I, I know clearly I shouldn't be doing that, but I, I just got covered. And then when she covers you, then she throws you down. Then your conscience goes down, you hit the bottom, and then you realize, oh, oh. and then you, you, then you climb back up again, you know? And hopefully the next time, you'll be a bit wiser mm -hmm. through, through the school of hard knocks. Yeah, it doesn't have to be that. There's another in the marathon. I was listening to go watching a Gurdwani lecture, and it was this, his one of his disciples like um, was saying, 
uh, you know, I, I don't feel like I'm sincere in Krishna consciousness, like I'm too attracted to Maya. And, and Gurgamin Maharaj is saying, you haven't been lashed hard enough by yeah. Maya. So he's saying, I bless Maya to lash you. He said that, I bless her to lash you and lash you and lash you again. <laughs> so like sometimes like it takes that beating, but that's like a bit of a, that's like the hard path. You know, yeah. it's like third, second, third class intelligence is yeah. taking yeah. a beating. If, you, if, if, if that works for lovers, that is how we, and that's why the process is slow. Mm -hmm. um, if we can get to the point where we're, we're learning by hearing, then, uh, see, the, the ability to hear is dependent on how well you can chant. Mm. If you can chant nicely, it may take you 16 rounds to get to the point of actually hearing nicely, and then you chant some extra rounds, and it helps to fine-tune your hearing. And then when the hearing is really good, when you read something, it'll go into your heart. Mm -hmm. But in order for it to do that, the hearing has to be really finely tuned, mm. and you, you hear it, and it's like, wow, it goes mm. in. And then you find yourself just automatically doing it, it's second nature. As long as you're reading sufficiently, you'll just be behaving in the proper way because you'll know this is this is the right thing to do. Yeah, like today even I discovered like Sankirtan and hearing are very connected to. Like if you go out and do some Sankirtan and then read, it's like it, it can get straight through that fog. Like the words get straight through the fog and you actually hear it for a change. And it's, it's really refreshing and clean like you know like it mm. might like i was reading about the blooming the manus all of the lines of manus you know it meant nothing to me but it felt very cleansing you know what i mean like it was, there's something to it you know? <laughs> well this is this come, brings us right back to the beginning in the beginning we were talking about karma and what, what's karma kanda mm. so you're doing the yogya then you want to cash in then you're going to feel good about yourself you're going to be able to just have some reaction free sense gratification everything's going to be fine and it's going to be great so that you cash in it now instead if you wanted to get the real result of performing the yoga then you would read and hear chant and hear and you'd find that your ability to do those things has been enhanced by the fire of purification so this is you really cashing in really getting because that will just set you up to again perform another yoga but it'll be of an even higher quality than the previous one because you'll have you be so much more nourished, so much more aligned with the philosophy. So you'll just next month and you'll just go off like a rocket. You won't it won't take your time to warm up and get into it. You'll just be straight away. So that's the best utilization of the sukriti that you accrue through performing the austerity of book distribution of the system in a period of time. Then mm -hmm. you're really you're really cashing in, you're getting transparent. Yeah. And you can for me personally I can witness it and some of the devotees around me that are doing the process correctly and you can see them levelling up, yeah. levelling up, levelling yeah. up. Yeah. Really inspiring and also yeah. humbling to see, you know. Yeah. Um, Great. So let's try and let's do try that. get back on it. Let's try and get that message out as well while we're doing the uh, Sangitan festival here. Somebody saying the devotees here, a lot of them are young mm -hmm. and fresh. Can they can they keep going? Can they understand what are the steps you need to take to sustain it? So that they don't they don't burn out and first of all, Sri Ramesh was singing Sri Dwati Chintamani that generally the first thing that devotees take a step back from is missionary work. Mm. And then after they've taken a step back from that, then they take a step back from the regular principles, the chanting the 16 rounds, the morning program. They all start taking these steps back over a, a long mm. period of time. So let's look at that. Why is that? And how can we avoid it? We're, we're in our safest position if we're on the front line doing missionary. Because it means if we step back, we're still doing something in devotion service. But you get to the point where you step back that many times, and when you step back the next time, you step out of Krishna consciousness mm -hmm. and devotion service, and then you're back fully in the eternal world. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think that's that's also linked to those durashrayas, like these shelters. Like you get this opportunity to cash out early. Maybe you can have a nice material position. You know, like yeah. doing some job, at least from my mind, doing some simple job seems more simple and easy than going out book distribution and getting smashed all day and mm -hmm. like yesterday some Christian tried to beat me in Kaladu but like we had a whole oh, wow. that was a whole oh. whole shaban for another podcast you know? but it was like you know what I mean like these, this kind of you're engaging with this unstoppable force it seems sometimes yeah. when you're going out on the street and they're just I just read I just took a photograph of that that was in the Brahmacharya Ashram 
and it struck a chord in my heart. It's from Bhattisiddhanta Saraswati. We should not be proud and think, I am expert, intelligent, a good speaker, a good singer. These thoughts are averse to devotional service. We need to feel ourselves lower than the straw in the street. If anyone attacks or criticizes us, we should tolerate it and simply chant Ari's holy name. We should think that today the Lord has mercifully awarded us the opportunity to become humbler than a blade of grass. When someone blasphemes us, we should know that the Lord is awarding us a benediction through those whose trouble is inevitable.